the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how parashurama the sixth incarnation of lord vishnu killed the evil kshatriya king kartavirya and purged the earth of kshatriyas 21 times After the Yadavas left, Yudhishthira and his team continued on their pilgrimage. They crossed the Payoshni River and arrived at the Vaidurya Mountains near the banks of the Narmada River. Rishi Lomasha said, "This is the place where Rishi Chavan, the son of the great sage Bhrigu, performed his long and hard worship to acquire mystical powers." Yudhishthira said. please tell us about rishi chavan they all sat down around lomasha as he began narrating the story many years ago rishi chavan practiced his hard worship in this forest he sat under a tree for years and engaged in deep meditation he lost his sense of physical existence and sat still for ages His body was covered in a termite hill. Shrubs and vines grew around him. Without food and drink, his body became frail and weak. But he didn't break his meditation. One day, King Saryati came to the forest on a vacation with his wives and his beautiful daughter Sukanya. The king and his men prepared for the hunting trip. while sukranya wandered around in the forest the loud noise from the king's entourage woke up chavan inside the termite hill through a pair of holes in the hill chavan saw princess sukanya play with the birds and flowers around him chavan felt attracted to the pretty princess and with his feeble voice he called her to come closer Sukanya felt she heard something but it was so faint she thought it must have been a bee or some other insect in the termite hill she came close and looked around to find the source of the sound suddenly she saw in the termite hill something that looked like eyes sukanya was curious to find out what they were she picked up a sharp stick and poked into one of the eyes the poke didn't hurt the yogi but he felt insulted by her insensitive behavior the angry rishi didn't curse the princess but his wrath fell on the king's soldiers who suddenly had a severe stomach cramp they held their tummies and cried out in pain king saryati was baffled to see his soldiers rolling in the ground and writhing in pain He asked, "What happened?" Nobody could answer him. He said, "A mass illness like this could only be caused by an evil curse. The old Rishi Chavan practices his meditation in this forest covered in a termite hill. Did any one of you do something to upset him?" The mention of the termite hill alarmed Sukanya. She came to her father and said. I I saw a pair of bright eye-like things in a termite hill and poked them with a stick. Oh no, what have you done? Those must be Rishi Chavan's eyes, said Saryati. He held Sukanya's hand and said, "Take me to the termite hill. We must beg for his forgiveness." King Saryati and Sukanya approached the termite hill. and dropped down to their knees the king said oh great rishi 
my daughter Sukanya has unknowingly hurt you. She was not aware of your presence. I ask for your forgiveness on her behalf. Please pardon her. The Rishi said, "Your daughter was arrogant and insensitive. I can pardon her only if you give her hand in marriage to me." King Sariyati didn't think twice. He said, "O oh, Rishi, it will be my honor to give my daughter to you." Rishi Chavan broke out of the termite hill and married Princess Sukanya. After the marriage, Sukanya devoted her life to take care of her old husband. Things were going quite well until one day. when the ashwini kumar twins the handsome celestial physicians came to the forest there by the river bank they saw the beautiful princess sukanya taking her bath her beauty mesmerized the twins they walked up to her and asked who are you pretty lady sukanya said i am sukanya wife of rishi chavan the twins were shocked to hear this they said how could a pretty woman like you be the wife of the old and weak rishi chavan how can he make you happy you deserve better leave him and marry one of us sukanna was not pleased at their proposal she picked up her wet clothes and said i love my husband i cannot leave him Dashini Kumar twin stopped her and said, "Wait, wait. We have another proposal for you. We are the physicians of the gods, and we can make your husband a young and handsome man again. Would you like that?" "Yes, of course I'd like that," said Sukanya. "But we have a condition," said the twins. "We will make your husband a young man, but then you will have to pick one amongst the three of us." as your husband sukanya went back to her husband and told him about the proposal rishi chavan agreed dashwini kumar twins took rishi chavan to the river bank they treated the old man with a medicinal balm and then stepped into the river to take a bath sukanya waited on the river bank with a garland in her hands when the three men emerged from the water the old rishi was transformed into a handsome young man indistinguishable from the shini kumar twins the three men walked up to sukanya and one of them said pick your husband from one of us sukanya looked at three of them and then walked to the man in the center and put her garland on his neck It was Rishi Chavan. The Shini Kumar twins were depressed. The happy Rishi called them and said, "Don't feel so bad. Tonight I will treat you with my special wine, Soma." The Shini Kumars were flabbergasted. We cannot drink Soma. We are the celestial doctors. By our King Indra's orders, we are forbidden from drinking Soma. Chavan said. Don't worry about Indra. I will take care of him. He invited the twins to King Sariyati's palace and asked the king to arrange for a yagna, a fire sacrifice. As the flames of the sacrificial fire rose, Chavan poured the soma wine into golden goblets and offered them to the Shini Kumar twins. Lord Indra intervened and said, "Do not offer wine to the Shini Kumars. They are the healers of the gods, and they do not have the right to drink wine." Shavan ignored Indra and said to the twins, "Here, have a sip of this heavenly drink." Indra was mad with anger. He lifted his weapon, the thunderbolt, to strike Shavan. But before he could hurl his weapon, Chavan cast his spell and immobilized Indra's arms. The Rishi then chanted few mantras and hurled sacred offerings to the fire. 
Dark smoke billowed from the fire and the smoke transformed into a grotesque demonic form named Mother. Mother opened his wide mouth and attacked Indra to swallow him alive. Indra was scared. He knelt before Chavana and said, Oh, powerful Rishi, please restrain your demon mother. From this day, Dashini Kumar twins will have the right to drink Soma. I give them my permission. Pleased with Indra's promise, Chavan withdrew mother and instated the evil spirit into vices like drinking, womanizing, gambling and hunting. Then he and Sukanya left King Saryati's palace and returned to their hermitage in the forest. After visiting the river Saraswati, Sindhu, the plains of Kurukshetra, the land of Kashmir, the Manas Lake and many other places, Yudhishthira and his team arrived near the banks of the rivers Jala and Upajala. Lomasha said, Here the great king Mushinara performed his fire sacrifice and passed the test of Lord Indra and Lord Agni. Tell us more, said Yudhishthira, as they gathered round Rishi Lomasha, who then began the story. Long ago, there lived a king named Ushinara. He was known to be the most kind and righteous man of the time. Once, while he was performing his fire sacrifice, Indra, the king of the gods, and Agni, the fire god, decided to test him. Agni took the form of a little dove and Indra took the form of a vicious hawk. The hawk chased the dove and the dove fled for his life and took shelter on King Ushinara's lap. King Ushinara put his arms around the dove to protect him from the diving hawk. The hawk perched on top of a flagpole and spoke out in a human voice. O oh, King! I am hungry. The dove is my food. Don't try to protect him for the sake of righteousness. It would be sinful of you to deprive me of my food. The king said, This scared little dove took refuge in me. I cannot abandon one whom I granted shelter. That is against my duty and my religion. The hawk said, If you deprive me of my food, I die. And if I die, my wife and children would die too. To protect one little dove, you will be destroying many lives. Remember, a religion that counters another's way of life is not a religion to pursue. Your decision should be weighed by the value it offers to the most. Ushinara said, O oh, great bird, you speak of wisdom. But why do you ask me to abandon a refugee? If you want to eat meat, I can offer you any animal you want. Cow, goat, deer, anything. Spare this dove. The hawk said, This dove has been destined to be my food. I won't eat anything other than this bird. The adamant king said, I can give you my kingdom if you'd like, but not the dove. The hawk waited for a while and then said, Well, if you are so kind to the dove, then here is the deal I offer you. Weigh the dove and give me as much flesh from your body. King Ushinara thought that shouldn't be difficult. After all, the tiny little dove weighs almost nothing. He asked his attendants to bring a scale balance and place the dove on one end. Then he cut a piece of flesh from his thighs and placed on the other pan on the scale. To his amazement, he found the dove weighed more. He clenched his teeth to bear the pain as he cut another piece of flesh from his arm and put it on the scale. 
but the dove still weighed more. Again and again, the king cut off pieces of flesh from his body and placed on the balance, but the dove seemed to get heavier and heavier. The hawk kept watching the scene as the king, covered in blood, kept on hacking his body with his knife. When the king had no flesh left on his body, he himself mounted on the scale. At that moment, the hawk spoke out. King Ushinara, I am Lord Indra, the king of the gods. That little dove is Agni, the god of fire. We came here to test your righteousness and resolve. And you have passed with flying colors. We are sorry for putting you through so much pain. But I can assure you, you will be known to the world as the most kind and righteous king who ever lived. This deed of yours will be remembered forever. Indra and Agni then took their original forms and returned to the heavens. Ushinara ruled his kingdom for many, many years and became famous for his illustrious deeds before he died and went to the heavens. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.